This here is the Genesis GV70 midsize premium SUV from Hyundai's premium brand. Well, can it be one of the best midsize SUVs overall? Let's find out. Thomas and Autofuel, let's go. Once again, a very strong design by Genesis here in the front. This one is the Sport line with black accentuations in the lower part and also a darker frame around the grille. We'll also soon compare the luxury line. And this matte paint here is called Melbourne Grey Matte. So greetings to all our Aussies down under. And the LED lamps, slim integrated here, modern daytime running light. I think design-wise already very well done in the front. And here we have the other color for you, a white vehicle, of course, more color choice available. And this one is also the luxury line. That means more chrome accentuations here upper and lower part. The length is at 4 meters 72 or 186 inches and these here are 19 inch wheels minimum. Maximum goes up to 21 inch wheels. We'll soon check it out with the other car. Once again a cool styling here for the matte paint. ECS electronically controlled suspension is standard so these are the adaptive dampers. An interesting design clue is right here at the C-pillar kind of standing upright. More reminds me of a Mercedes GLE doesn't it? And then we have this separated window here in the rear. And clearly when you go for a white color, this third window there in the rear becomes just more obvious. But it looks a little bit weird, doesn't it? And there it is, the white vehicle, which kind of looks completely different than the darker one from the side profile. Don't you think so as well? And here then the 21 inch wheels, really massive here for that mid-size SUV segment. And in any case, wheel arches painted in vehicle color. The luxury line here in the rear, definitely a sport look and really modern here with the flat integration of the rear lamps. How it looks like down there, yes, we have chrome in the luxury line, but this is also more about which engine do you have. This one here equipped with a diesel and there is no exhaust pipe whatsoever. It's just really the rear one underneath, but I think that brings a really clean design. Design here for the sport line and petrol engine. You can see here this part, you know, it's a little bit more accentuated than with this, you know, checkered structure. And then, well, outer fuel fake exhaust alloy is present right here because the real exhaust on the inside, the outer tips are fake. Well, the air does go through, but still a case for the outer fuel fake exhaust police. Otherwise, you know, the redesign is really cool, I think. By the way, some more colors. This one here is called burgundy, so a very, very dark red. Oh, and what about the strong red one? They really have a nice red exterior color, don't they? And turning indicators, we know it from Genesis already. They're really, really cool, both hazard lights and turning indicators with this double LED scheme here in the two stripes. That doesn't count for the GV70 in the rear here, though, because they are then placed in the lower part. Well, it has a reason. Because when you open that hatch, then they would otherwise disappear. Well, 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 but the German eye discovered this one here, the Spaltmaße, the panel gaps, and look at that here. Not really happy with, you know, how the hood is being bent here in the front. So this is kind of like too big, the gap. And then also secondary part. What is this here? You know, this overlapping hood here in the front. Not sure why they did that in this exact kind of way. Hmm. Luxury line interior. Here it becomes obvious why you should go for the sport line in this case if we decide between these two. Look at that steering wheel. We know it from the bigger models. It just looks yeah, too traditional, too old school, I think. Here and also with animal skin seats. There in the base model, you can get a beige or black leatherette. So they cover this one definitely, but it will be even more interesting in the sport line to come. And there we go. This steering wheel looks way more likable. Sport design. Somewhat similar as we know from the G70. However, there's one big change here. There are still real buttons in the scene. We're glad we have them. But then also some capacitive buttons, but at least it's not all capacitive. So they found still a good mix. And then this would be the other alternative to the pure leatherette seats that are available. These ones here on the sport line. A mix of fabric right here and then leatherette right there. So according to the information, also animal free. And they are more breathable than, of course, if there's a fabric share. So these are then indeed also seats to go for. Pretty cool. But let's not forget the car key. Also here with this remote parking function, by the way. Zoom more to that. And then the door closing sound. Yeah, quite nice. But yeah, beep, 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 beep. Uh -huh. Instead of the doors here, soft touch. 
good look, also contrast stitches, and also nice quality here from the buttons and so on. So this looks all really good and also how everything is processed and also the, you know, all the panel gaps here on the inside, really superb. When I shut down the ignition, steam wheel comes up, seat moves backward. When I activate the ignition, steam wheel comes down, seat comes forward and yeah, of course the yeah, <laughs> quite obvious beep, 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 something. <laughs> we know it. Um, yeah, it's actually a very nice seating position. You have a lot of room around you and you don't feel like the huge difference to the bigger GV80. So this one here already feels quite sophisticated. I've also driven the G70, the sedan, the, you know, sister model to this one here. And I found that the difference G70 to G80 is way larger than here GV70 to GV80. Quite interesting, isn't it? So good seating position, nice fabric seats, breathable. One means a six, six with one, enough space left. So, so far, good. Here the interior overview, you can see a very clean design, especially here then, another red dashboard. And then this 14.5 inch widescreen taken from a G80 or a GV80. So there's a major difference also if you compare the sedan brother, the G70 here to the GV70 SUV, where the sedan gets the smaller screen. And here also some more updates. This is here, this area more modern. Looks really cool designs and I'm really glad they kept the temperature dials here in a manual way. Just the vent strength has to be controlled by the screen, but yeah, I can live with that as long as this one here is still there. So this is kind of like a mix of traditional and modern, I would say. And you still have hard hotkeys here, for example, to access the map. There's also a very interesting screensaver here, of course, and you also have a lower home button to access the main menu there again. Again, the steering wheel, perfect at the sides, and then you can still also have these hard keys here, capacitive button to activate the cruise control, for example. Soon also to these three-dimensional instruments a little bit more, head-up displays available. And here in the lower part, yeah, we can see here, it's an interesting cubby hole, but for the smartphone, but goes really deep in there. So you really have to bury out your smartphone there always. And this is also a very interesting part right here, because you remember in the GV80 or in the G80, this one here is a, this one is completely shallow. You can only do like da, 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 the DJ. And now they switched it to a real knob here. You can actually like use like this. And this is way more practical, so much easier to cruise through the menu. It was said before that maybe you can mistake then the shifting lever here. They are shifting. It's not a shifting lever, it's shifting knob with that one. But I think no, um, because this one is just so much more here and you just use it once or twice. And this one then is also a little bit higher and it feels differently. Um, so I don't think I would mistake this one for that one. Would you? Cup holders are also adaptive. Nicely done. And we have this middle armrest. Could be a little bit better attached underneath. More space. And the digital instruments have a 3D effect, but you cannot see that on camera just with your own eyes. And then the middle contents can be changed. And then we have a head-up display, useful option and yeah, these guys are cleaning a Thomas Blue Genesis G70. Check out that review as well. And by the way, another proof of quality or how these gaps or how these contrast stitches are very well aligned. And then this infotainment system, once again, so much easier to control now from below and so much quicker. Again, the great screensaver, like where you have the transition to the map. However, the software itself, yeah, I mean, it's okay and also better than past ones. Still, you know, with this kind of hook thingy for the pinch and zoom, I don't know what they're thinking, why they are not finally removing that. Um, yeah, and then for example here, seat controls, you have some detailed settings right there. If you don't want to do them by the seat themselves, there's a terrain mode available even. You know, yeah, but at the moment it's off, but nice visualizations here for the vehicle. I can also start the car and show you more about that. Here we go, then we have even better visualization of that. And we also have these degree angles and so on. And then the CarPlay integration looks like this. And you still have a map then on the right part because it's so much widescreen actually. And let's listen to that sound system. Yeah, very clear.
in the rear there's also this leather cover for the rear door here as well and then there's also an advantage if you compare now the g70 sedan here you have more legroom because you sit more upright this exactly fits then also headroom wise no problem there's a nice hanger here also for your jackets however if you compare to other suvs in this segment it's not the most you know no, no, no not the most plentiful legroom here there is but it's actually okay then the back part of the seat can be adjusted more upright or more to the back. Oh, like really like a sleeping position. Goodbye. <laughs> so that goes really far. There is a huge middle tunnel here, however. So moving in the back here is yeah, quite complicated. In the middle part, you sit quite upright. Also it gets close to the knees. So rather four tall adults and the fifth tall adult is maybe like just for short term. Nice rear climate unit here as well. And also two USBs. USB 8 chargers actually and then in the middle part we have cup holders they are not adaptive though the trunk opens here like in the Porsche Macan and 540 up to 1680 liters that's not too much actually because it's not that high however you have an even loading still the length here of the trunk is 96 centimeters or about 37 inches and the total height right here 28 inches or 72 centimeters the width between the wheel arches it's very interesting yeah it's definitely a good meter of 40 inches and you can see here a backpack also fits here and well, underneath the cover the thing is you know when it fits like this it's being kept tight but this like you know a little bit wobbly that's the you know disadvantage to that but then you can keep things tight with that so there's pro and con to that definitely but even more interesting is of course when we take it out completely and there's something which is you know created in a very nice solution here because here in the front first of all listen to that carefully click so this one is kind of secured with a click but when it's open you can remove the side pads here and then there's actually really space to store that rear cover so here we go change it now see works and then we can fold the seats from here that's also quite practical one third two thirds split and indeed folds very directly and when we then measure the length to the driving seats it's, yeah it's almost 180 in meters that means yeah some 70 inches overall well usable and one of my favorite features when you approach the vehicle this functionality was introduced with the previous generation Hyundai Tucson here you just wait a little bit it beeps and then it automatically opens without you needing to make a foot kick or something and it's really practical when you have heavy items in your hand and opens quite yeah fairly wide i can stand underneath it with one with a6 or six of one and child safety test let's see yeah also proven and of course beep 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 <laughs> And now to that remote parking function so even if the car is already closed you always have to hit the close button again and then directly after that the right one in the top then maybe heard it the car has started and then let's just imagine it's like in a very tight parking spot you can move it actually with the key okay there we go i had to be a little bit closer to the vehicle and now it's rolling forward See here, when I'm, when I'm getting too far away, it automatically stops, so I have to be closer. Come on, here we go. Come on, buddy. Yes, good boy, good boy. And not goodbye. Uh, yeah, good boy, from, from good boy to goodbye now. <laughs> also works here, reverse, by the way. The GV70 gets the more modern engines than the sedan brother, the G70, here with more displacement. So that's an interesting trend. 2.5 liter four cylinder turbo engine with 250 or 300 horsepower in this spec, then here, 6.1 seconds in the acceleration, or the 3.5 liter V6, and with 380 horsepower and 5.1 seconds, so a second faster, and then there's also a 2.2 liter diesel. Oh, look at that. These firefighters having a great time with their vintage vehicle. <laughs> Obviously taking some photo. 
So let's go here, Thomas's driving lounge with the Genesis GV70. This will be very interesting. Why? First of all, first time for me in this vehicle. Then, how is it rating against Mercedes GLC, Audi Q5, BMW X3, for example? And how does it rate against the bigger Genesis GV80 SUV? And also comparing it to the G70 sedan, the platform brother. So actually then three different very interesting aspects and of course overall how good is it you know in this segment and first I have to say exterior wise great styling interior wise good build quality and also the user interface is still somewhat classic in a way that we can easily access a lot of the functions and now driving wise yeah the platform itself feels quite agile and light. There's a big difference to the GV80 definitely. But the thing is that from the interior, you know, from the perceived interior space, it doesn't feel so much smaller. This is a very interesting key finding for me here already. So when I compared really the G70 versus the G80, so mid-size sedan versus their big sedan, huge difference already from the interior and also driving wise huge difference but here then the differences gv70 versus gv80 are not that large as you would might expect and this one here also has a lot of modern features and of course has the same infotainment system for example this one has the more modern engines the bigger engines the more powerful engines and yeah in a way of course this one feels more agile than the bigger suv and also for an SUV, it feels quite agile. With their big vehicles, Genesis rather goes to a, you know, very comfortable luxury approach here. And with their mid-size vehicle, they definitely they definitely feel sportier and more or in, in the sporty directions. Also, if you compare it to the German competitors, so their G80 and GV80 more against Mercedes E-Class and Mercedes GLE, where I feel that this one here is rather against the Q5 or the BMW X3 from you know the, the basic philosophy. Cruise control set here at the steering wheel and then I select here with the hard button. That is actually really cool. And let's see the lane keeping assist if it's keeping me in the lane. Yeah so far quite well. Now it's a little left bend and not too intrusive too intrusive yet. Blind spot monitors also with this vehicle. There's like a warning triangle. Let's see when that Volvo is overtaking us now. There we go. So there's a red triangle then in the side mirror. And then also get this acoustic warning if I hit the turning indicator. And by the way, when I hit the turning indicator, it feels so sophisticated when you put it down. That's really, really nice, really awesome. This engine here, you do feel that's just good to have a little bit more displacement and if you compare this 2.5 liter against the 2 liter in the G70 so it's just you know more calm on the one hand at the same time it's also more powerful and yeah that's of course a good thing noise insulation here so far so good 120 kilometers an hour so like 70 miles an hour typical motorway speed and I don't have to raise my voice that much. Gives me a very comfortable and pleasing, pleasing exper uh, experience. Here, especially the fabric seats are so much more comfortable than the rather stiff, you know, surface from the animal skin. And yeah, so that is also a thing that adds to the comfort, definitely. And agile driving wise, it doesn't shake up too much. So once again, doesn't lean too much into the, in the, into the corners and so on. Feels actually quite sporty. Steering feeling is rather direct. So um, let's see how natural it feels. Yeah, it could feel a little bit more natural. However, I think it's quite okay. And also I feel in the GV70 a little bit better than in the G70. Maybe they tuned that already. So I do feel quite one with the vehicle already. And oh, that's set. I take out okay. That's that's a little bit smaller. But the thing is, really, it's an easy vehicle to learn. You get in the vehicle and you immediately feel at home, and you get along very well. So let's now accelerate from 90 kilometers an hour to what? Let's see. Club, that's 120. 
And about that engine sound, by the way, you can also go to the main menu. And really glad to have this lower control unit because I don't want to, you know, put the, my fingers around that screen while driving. Now I set the cruise control. When I'm a little bit distracted, it's always um, definitely safer to do and go to settings. And then there's here active sound design and let's put it to the enhanced mode. Let's just to that. Yeah, that's interesting. So that's not like, whoa, are we in a V6 now? There's also V6 available, but we're not in that one here. However, the 300 horsepower we have here, definitely more than enough for this vehicle. Um, but, yeah, I feel also that this feels a little bit better sound-wise than it does in the two-liter four-cylinder of the G70. You got to check out that video. That was a little bit weird how that sound actuator sound was there. So, yeah, maybe here put it to normal or minimized or something, and then I think it's absolutely fine. You're also in traffic on the motorway feeling good overview good view to the rear also to the sides and I really have to say this is such a good package they're offering so exterior wise they can easily keep up with the Germans this is of course made of preference interior wise the build quality is great then they find something you know like a compromise of modern things and um, you know still real buttons and things to use and this is just so much better than like the way Mercedes is going now at the moment. So this one more like in the direction of um, where BMW has been heading. And this one here also feels so much more sophisticated. The suspension is really good, 19 inch wheels. I would also advise not to go for the 21 inch wheels or the 20 inch wheels. Stick with these one, they will deliver best comfort. So good compromise of comfort and sportiness. And I feel that also the suspension they use here is somehow better than in the bigger models or if that, you know, reduced weight or something also plays a good role in that. So with the G80 and the GV80, I sometimes had like this push in the back, like when you're going over some uneven parts of the road, like, whoa, that was not feeling that sophisticated, it's definitely. From what we've seen from the interior and also you're now driving wide, this is the best Genesis model at this moment. No doubt about that. It feels most sophisticated, it feels most modern, yet at the same time they've kept some of the elements. We are happy that they kept them, you know, like the manual climate, climate dials and so on. It feels really spacious on the inside. It's very comfortable here on the German motorway, also long term. Yet at the same time, it's so much more agile than their bigger models. So this model here for the Genesis lineup does it all. It is the best, I mean, compromise sounds so bad, but it, it takes the best of both worlds. You feel like you would be driving a big SUV without having the disadvantages of having like a super large SUV. By the way, here the top part of the windscreen has like a, um, you know, it's like a, it's like a tinting or something. So and. Um, this transition then is really smooth. This blue is Thomas blue color of the, uh, of the windscreen. And therefore, most of the time, I don't even need to use the additional shield. And this really protects against the top part of the sun. Also a very clever detail, a very clever feature. So they really paid attention to the details with that vehicle. And I just love that. Lane changing, by the way, feels very natural. And once again, I'm really happy with the steering here. I wasn't quite happy with the steering in the G70, but here obviously in the newer model, they worked more on that. Exactly what I told them with the G70, they should still update. Well, there's a facelift now for that, but obviously they you know, forgot to put more effort in that. Let's also push that drive mode selector here and set to sport mode and also enhance sound. And yeah, this just sounds more spectacular and from you know, like 90 kilometers now and we're already at speed. Let's accelerate it out. One seventy kilometers an hour. Yeah, good acceleration. Very nicely done. That was very cool. And also here, super silent here. At, at higher speeds and also very stable. I feel this one is even more silent than the sedan version, which is, you know, not logical because it's the SUV and stands more against the wind. But once again, that proves 
the thing that this is here yeah kind of the most sophisticated genesis vehicle and to me it feels even more silent and also like the you know the bigger brothers yeah they have this active noise cancellation but you maybe know that i'm not such a friend of it here by the way augmented reality in the gps display here this is also pretty cool so um they have a, you know like a better signal of like which lane should i really pick there's a camera image and together then it's showing me okay this is like you know the exit you need to take also a very good feature so um yeah definitely um Really, no matter what the price is, if you ask me at the moment, which Genesis vehicle would you pick overall from all of them? Haven't driven the all-electric one yet, like the G80 all-electric, which is coming. But so far, we really have to say, the GV70, it will be. So, you know, this gaps in the hood and this overlapping hood there in the front, which I could criticize, but here, by the way, once again, the cameras, when you turn, hit the turning indicators, sees another blind spot feature, basically, from the side mirror cams. So, yes, this hood overlapping um, and, yeah, the infotainment system software can always be better. Um, most of the time, probably, you will end up using Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But it looks at least cool, you know, especially, uh, this is my favorite view of the infotainment system with that kind of screensaver mode, so to speak. But I really have to search for anything that is wrong with this vehicle. There's just hardly anything wrong with this vehicle. It drives very well, so well built, really, really impressed. And I have to say, if we consider now Messi HGLC, Audi Q5 and BMW X3, they are all excellent vehicles, no doubt. Volvo XC60, um, of course, as well. They are all very, very good. But this one here, is definitely among the best premium mid-size vehicles, period. So, thumbs up here for the Genesis team. And also good for me personal, of course, that they have the leatherette seats in the base option. And they also offer these fabric seats here in the sport line. So they also learned more about that. So it will be very, very interesting if they can succeed on the European market. They are trying to attack the European market right now. They're all really popular in the US and in Europe. It's so tough to compete against all the BMW Mercedes in the premium segment. Will it work? Hmm. If you then think about the pricing, so you can easily live with an entry model of this vehicle and it's already fully packed almost, you know. There's always something you can pick more, but if you compare it then, you know, to the other offerings on the market and you pay like 50K euros or something and you're done and you can easily save 10,000, 15,000 euros or something to a competitor, which is, you know, similarly respect. So, and then it's not worse in any, in, in any aspect or something, you know. So uh, the price performance in the premium segment here is definitely unmatched. Fuel economy, you have to calculate with some nine or 10 liters on one kilometers. So something below 30 mpg. If you've subscribed to our channel, we will keep you all updated with these developments. And here, now, we either see you at the G70 review, the platform brother as a sedan by Genesis, or what about the bigger Genesis, the GV80, the bigger SUV? Have you seen that already? And also, in the video description, some links to competitors of this one here.